Hello friends, welcome to Village of Jesus Christ, where we are nuts for Jesus and just plain nuts. Have you figured this out yet after a year and a half? <laughs> if I'm out of my mind, it's for the sake of God, it's in my right mind, it's for your sake. So for nuts, we're nuts, truly for Jesus. For our right mind, is for you. And for walking that tightrope of sanity and insanity, it's for both. Yeah, blessing God, blessing people. Why? Because we're kind of out of our mind sometimes. There you go. Oh. I have fallen in love with unsweetened tea. A new caffeine source for me. Can't drink coffee, it makes me sick. Uh, it gives me uh, um, the acid in the coffee. Diet, Coke, Diet Cokes just tear me to pieces. The, the, the NutraSweet makes me hungry all the time. So, hey, got some. I've finally gotten used to and enjoying actually the taste of unsweetened tea. I never thought I could do this. I like the taste of dishwater in the morning. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Anyway, I think we might finish Philippians 4. I finished, it's Philippians 4, last chapter in Philippians. Then we're in Colossians. And then we're in 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy. So we're, 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 we're getting through. So let's just jump right in here. A minute and a quarter here. We're doing all right. So again, hopefully we finish today. If we don't, we'll finish, uh, we'll finish on Monday, make our Sunday. As, uh, again, I go home tomorrow, so. So let's just jump right on there. Let me have a little water here. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. Wow. Man. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, he loved and longed for him. They were his joy and crown. Wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't you like when someone thinks about you, they think about you as their joy and their crown? I love that. He filled them with joy, and he was, he was part of their crown, the, the achievements you know he did in Christ. Amen. You know, the, the, the evangelism and such. Wow. That is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear faith. Amen. Um, uh, let's go back one verse here. And we, uh, because you need to read this verse to understand what he's talking about, about standing from the faith. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, this is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. You stand firm because we're waiting for Christ. We eagerly await a Savior, amen, who's going to have everything under his control. We talked about this the last time. And he's going to transform our lowly bodies. And we'll, so we'll have glorious bodies like his. And that's why we should stand firm. Man, good stuff is coming, what Paul is saying. And it is good. Let's continue on here. Uh, this is the, uh, the top heading is joy and giving. I plead with, <laughs> I plead with Eodia, E-U-O-D-I-A, Eodia. I'm going to go. I plead with Eodia and I plead with uh, Syntyche. I plead with Eodia and plead with Syntyche to agree with each other. So these cats actually had a problem. They didn't agree with each other. And Paul, uh, to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, amen. We we'll always want to agree in the Lord if we can. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow. Don't you love that? They were his loyal, 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 yoke, loyal yoke fellow, his, his loyal workers with him. Loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. I love how Paul was so intimate. And I love how God let Paul put this in the Bible. Isn't that cool? It shows the intimate nature. He even mentions this guy Clement, who we're going to meet in heaven someday. And, uh, and, the, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are written in the book of life. So you had, you had Eodia, Syntyche, and Clement, all mentioned by name. Paul was, you know, I always struggle with Paul because Paul is so driven, so strong, type A person. I always picture Paul as type A. He just seems like a driven guy. And like Barnabas carried his luggage and Timothy and Titus, they were his helpers. But Paul, man, he was like a machine for Christ. And I struggle with that because you know, I don't, I don't deal. I'm not, I'm, I'm more of the Barnabas type. I'm more of the luggage carrying guy. I'm not this, I'm not the bull in the china shop. Let's get the job done guy. I'm just not that. It's not my personality. But it's so cool when you see how he mentioned people by name, how he was personally, you, you can get a misrepresentation by somebody's writings about the way they were personally. He must have loved these people. Again, they were his joy and his crown. He must have loved these people. He called them by name and put it in the scriptures. Isn't that cool? Let's continue on. I just, how can you not love Paul, man? Just, amen. Uh, 
Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Man, just keep rejoicing in the Lord. You're having a bad day. You know, I'm not negating the bad days. You know, you get your foot cut off. You run your foot over with your mower and your foot goes flying. You're having a bad day. But after you get through the pain of that and you go get your foot reattached, rejoice. Lord, thank you it wasn't both feet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, there's always a way to rejoice. You could have lost all. You could have lost all ten toes. You only lost five, and you got them back there reattached. So there you go. So amen. Rejoice the Lord always. Again, I'll say rejoice. Let your gent. Oh, I love this. Let your gentleness be every uh, evident to all. Man, be gentle, good, kind, gentle. My favorite three fruits in the in the, in the Galatians five list. Goodness, kindness, jealous. We can be good, kind, and gentle to each, to anyone, even your enemies. The guy's about to hang you on the cross. The guy's about to cut your head off. You can look right at the guy and say, I forgive you. I forgive you for what you're about to do to me. You can be good to the guy about to take your life. Goodness, kindness, gentleness. Man, I love it. Let your gentleness be ev ev evident to everyone. Just be gentle to everyone. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Amen. The Lord is, the Lord is near. Be gentle. The Lord's near. Amen. Do not be... Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Amen. And I'm going to give you the promise in a minute, but don't be anxious about, don't be anxious about Corona. Don't be anxious about your job. Don't be anxious about your living situation. Don't be, I'm, I'm just throwing those out there. Don't be anxious about your health. Don't be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. Petition means to, to go to God. It's like prayer. Same thing, basically. With thanksgiving, prayer, petition, thanksgiving. You pray, you ask God, you petition. Prayer is just going to God. It's, I don't know, there's, I'm sure there's a subtle difference between prayer and petition they wouldn't have put in here. But by prayer, ask going to God. Petition, again, going to God, asking Him. With thanks, and you thanking him. God, I'm coming to you now, and I'm thanking you for the answer already. You know, I, I'm just, I just I'm, I'm, since I'm totally personal with you guys, I've already asked God, with prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, I've asked him to, to give me a Christmas present. And I believe with all my heart I'm going to get a Christmas present. Either what I've asked for or something better. So, and I'm just waiting to see. I see how it all comes out. God's going to surprise me. It's going to be beautiful. Prayer, petition, thanksgiving. Just throwing that out at you. Amen. Present your request to God. Okay, so you present and watch it. And here's verse 7. And here's the promise. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. God's peace transcends all understanding. He can put a peace on you. You can be standing next to a nuclear weapon and don't even bother you. You could be melting. Don't even bother you. Why? Because his peace is in you. It, tr it transcends all understanding. Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. His peace, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. One more of the billion benefits, a trillion, quadrillion benefits to being in Christ. The peace of God, which transcends all knowledge, will be in your hearts and minds. Whew. We're blessed. Let's keep going. I could just die. I'm die. I told you these Ephesians. All you guys, I just die. I'm just die tribe central for me on this stuff. I love this stuff. Finally, brothers, and all this is one of my favorite passages. This is what we should be meditating on. Not the negative, but the positive. Here's that's why I stay out of the news. Don't unless you're a news junkie and you just can't be changed. Stay out of the news. The news will keep you in the darkness. The news will keep you crazy. This is. This is this is what the kind of stuff we should be meditating on. Finally, brother, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. It's a good list. It's a joyful, wonderful list. That's what we meditate on. You should write those down on your fridge. Meditate on these things. Amen. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. Paul was the example. Hey, you see it in me, you hear it from me, put it into practice. Amen. And the God and the and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Isn't that good? Whew, so good. And the God of peace will be with us. Isn't that beautiful? I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have vague concern, but you had no opportunity to show it. So the Philippians from Philippi, they were concerned about Paul, but they had no way, somehow didn't have no way to show it. I had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, but I, for I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstance. I know what it is. This is one of my favorite passages. This and I live. This is one of my four favorite things: contentment. I've learned to be content, 
whatever the circumstance, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I know I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Contentment should be your goal, to be content. You know how few people in the world, the handful of people in the world that are truly content, I'm one of them. I'm content in any situation. Well-fed uh, uh, well or underfed, poverty, nakedness, or, or plenty. And because it's, it's that you come to total rest when you're content. You're not looking for that, that the, 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 as the old saying, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You're not looking for, well, the, you know, so it's always better on the other side of the fence. You're not looking, uh, you know, uh, over the rainbow. You're not looking for any of that. You're, have, you're at rest in your situation. Whatever it is, day by day, you find peace and rest in it. Contentment is so powerful. My four things are contentment, joy, rest, and peace. Those are my four things. Joy and speak full of glory, peace that surpasses understanding, contentment in any and every situation, and resting at Jesus' feet. I've got those four things in my heart, and it keeps me level and stable. Find whatever you need. Have a, have a foundation like that. Whatever your four things, five things, ten things, one thing, whatever it is that keeps you grounded, hold on to it. With, and don't let anybody, your family, friends, nobody take it. Your enemies, don't let anybody take it away from you. Amen. I have learned to be content whatever if I'm not saying it's kind of learn to be content whatever the circumstances. Whatever circumstances content. I know it is being need, I know it is that plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And he could do it through him who gives him strength. That was Christ, of course. That's the only way he could be content. Yet it was good of you to share in my trouble. See Paul's be it totally real. Yet it was good of you to share my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. So they were close. To, they were dearer to Paul's heart. They were before any other church gave. The, the uh, Philippians gave, and he came from Macedonia. So so um, he was just. He was just telling them, you know, hey man, you're, you know, since I've been doing this trip here and coming to you, you're the only one sharing and giving. Amen. And that good, that's so good. Let me read that again. Moreover, so, so and moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of the acquaint, your acquaintance with the gospel, when I was when I set out from Macedonia, and not one church shared in the matter of giving or receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me again and again. You sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Man, these cats were, man, hey, man, where's Paul at? Where's Paul at? Hey, Paul's in, uh, Paul's in Thessalonica. Okay, okay, Bob, go to Thessalonica. Here's a big pile of, here's a bunch of stuff for some socks, some spare socks, some money, some groceries. Take them to Paul. <laughs> and Bob, got, Bob, however you get to Thessalonica, jumped on his thing and went to, hey, Paul, got some stuff from you, from the Philippians. We love you, man. <laughs> Not... <laughs> Um, when I was in need, not that, I, not look, watch this. <laughs> this is good. Verse seven, not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. Remember what I'm always saying here. Jesus said the cups of cold water. Guess what? Everyone you give away, everyone you bless somebody with is credited to your account. God's keeping an account of your generosity and he's keeping an account of your stinginess too. They're both measured and weighed because of the stingy person. You know, a generous man gives and always has more to give, but a stingy man hoards and comes to poverty. God's checking your heart out by your giving. That's part of your heart check is your giving. Are you open-handed and generous at, every, at any turn? Are you willing to give out cups of cold water or whatever the need is for someone? And it's credited to you as righteousness into your account. Isn't that beautiful? God, nothing is lost in the kingdom. I told you that, man. Nothing is lost. Amen. Let's keep going. Um, I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. So, man, he was in love with these guys. And these guys were in love with Paul. This was a love relationship. They were thankful Paul brought them the gospel. Ain't that cool? Amen. This is beautiful. I love the love here. It's just beautiful. They are... Oh, 
This is what the gifts were to Paul. Watch this. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. They were good. They were they were like that that uh, uh, the aroma of the uh, incense to God. This was a, a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. Please God that these guys shared their substance with Paul and made God happy. Isn't that cool? You can make God happy. Share your stuff. So simple. Just share your stuff. You want to please God? Share your stuff with your brother in need. Don't be tight-fisted. Be open-handed. And trust God. A generous man gives and always has more to give. Why? Because as a man, as a generous man's giving and giving and giving, God's, God's just resupplying and resupplying and resupplying. <laughs> you know, you're giving and giving and you never run out. It's like Jesus with the fishes and loaves. They never ran out. Why? Because God was giving them more fishes and loaves as they're giving them away to 5,000 men and women and children. And then still they had baskets full left afterwards. That God, because God always gives more than you give. So you give away 10, God's giving you 15. Because he knows you're going to give the 15 away, and then he's going to give you 20. And you're going to give the 20 away, he's going to give you 25. <laughs> and pretty soon he's going to start multiplying. Then you're going to give the 30 away, he's going to give you 90. And you're going, ooh, I like this multiplication. Then you give the 90 away, and he gives you 2,000. <laughs> Man, don't hold on to nothing. Nothing. Just give it away. Be a blessing. Ah, oh, so good. And be a, you can you can be a fragrant offering in the kingdom. Isn't that not cool or what? Amen. And please God. Pleasing to God. This is so good. Amen. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ. God's gonna meet all your needs according to his glory. How rich is God? He owns the universe. You think it's a problem for him to meet your needs? I don't think so. He's running the planets. He's running the universe. Nothing's bumping into each other. <laughs> and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Who is it in? It's in Jesus, of course. It's all in Jesus. Amen. <laughs> to our God and Father be glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Amen. Greet all, final greetings, greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. To the brothers who are with me, the brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. There he is again, mention the name. Hey man, by the way, Caesar's household says hi. <laughs> you remember Caesar's household? That's the guy with the big screen TV, man. Woo, yeah, you watch the game with that guy. Yeah, rock and roll. Love Caesar, man. Great chicken wing, Caesar. Love you, man. <laughs> Make it a 21st century, huh? Bring in the Bible into the 21st century. Amen. Chicken wings and big screen TVs. Amen. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Whew. Are these not beautiful words? <laughs> How can you not love this? It's just, man, amen and amen. Man. The blessing of the word of God, man. We're so good. And the Bible says there's going to come a day when the famine of hearing the word of God. Someday men aren't going to have an opportunity. Someday they're going to snuff this out. The Antichrist is going to snuff it out. And, I mean, it's going to be hard to hear the word of God someday, man. Today is the day of salvation, man. We're blessed. We're blessed to still have this in it. They haven't burned all these, you know. They did the book burning there in, uh, in, in World War II, Germany, of the Jewish books and stuff. We're fortunate yet they haven't taken this from us, Bernard. That's why you want this in your heart. That's why you want to be in this book. You want to sow all this. Friend of mine, a friend of mine, just real quick, I'm almost done. Friend of mine, I recommended um, uh, every day. Uh, a friend of mine, Dwight, he isn't going to see this because he doesn't have a smartphone. But a friend of mine, Dwight, in Arkansas, loved the guy, great guy. One of the master welders, one of the best welders in the world. True story. He's a master welder. Incredible. Natural born welder. And um, he... Uh, I said, read a, just read a, read a proverb a day. Proverbs 31, and that's a good idea. Hey, hey, kids, you listen to this? Read one proverb a day. And he started reading it, and he said, I don't understand it, Josh. I said, don't worry about understanding it. You're sowing it into your heart right now. Understanding comes later. When we, when we read these words, when we listen to these words, they're sown into our heart. And the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit starts mixing them and working with them and, and bring them to your remembrance. Now. But you've got to put them in your heart. You have to make the effort. Faith without deeds is dead. You have to put them in your heart through listening, through reading. And now he's telling me, Josh, this, uh, you know, I'm saying things. I don't even know why I'm saying it. But it's, it's, it's stuff that's in Proverbs, but it's, it's coming to his remembrance. I said, that's the process. That's how this thing works. We, we put all this word in our heart. 
And then when we need it, the whole we need it for whatever the Holy Spirit brings it out of us. Amen. 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 Man, we're blessed. You're blessed. You're in this word. You're listening to this word. You're blessed. Love you, love you. Can't get enough of you. I am just, I'm in diatribe mode today. I'm just feeling good. But anyway, love you, love you. Share these things. Let people know, let the people that you, that, you know, if you can find the caffeinated Christianity, it's on, it's on my village idiots page on YouTube, S send them out, give these things away for free. We just want to share the love, share the word with everybody possible. That's, that's what this is all about. It has nothing to do with, with getting likes and subscriptions and all that kind of subscriptions are fine, but I'm not trying to monetize it. They don't give a crap if I make a penny off this. That's not the point. The point is people getting the word of God in their hearts. That's the point. The word of God in our hearts. Love you, love you.